so I, I think people are confused about this because they were they thought that once 60, 70 percent of the population was vaccinated, this would go away. And then the other aspect of that is that a lot of the people and maybe you can clarify how many, because it is confusing. A lot of the people who are getting COVID are vaccinated. That is, they, they, they seem to be at least, um, uh, I don't know, superficially, there seem to be more people with breakout cases than one would have expected based on the kind of Pfizer and Moderna numbers initially. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just kind of the impression. I think it's part of why people, I think, are confused about the vaccinations. So can you clarify kind of all of that? Okay, <laughs> so, so, a couple, so there's a, a whole bunch of points to try yeah. to explain. So first of all, let's think about, so we saw these Moderna, Pfizer, j j had these high efficacy numbers from the clinical trials. It's important to remember that when those clinical trials were done, especially Moderna and Pfizer, many parts of the world were under lockdown. There was little chance to get exposed. People were all wearing masks. So that's going to bias your result in favor of the vaccine. Because so it's before not we go on, so tell us how these, how these tests are actually done. So they take a population of people and they, assume, you know, they let them live their lives and half get and half not, and some will get the. So, so it really does depend on the conditions under when the test is done? Exactly, because at the time, it, if, if, you're, if your daily life is nothing is open, you can't go do anything, you're obviously going to have less exposure to COVID than if you, do a, if you do a trial right now. So first of all, there's that level, there's that issue, is that those efficacies in the trials were not real world conditions, and, because the real world changed. Yeah. Number one is that at the time of Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, we were dealing with the, the ancestral strain, the Wuhan strain of the virus. Soon after that, the alpha strain emerged, and then the delta strain. Those alpha and delta, even though the vaccines did a, a really good job, there was a decrease in the amount of protection. And at the same time, people were getting pandemic fatigue, saying, I'm sick of this. All, many of the mask mandates went away. Things started opening back up. People started to learn to risk calculate. So their activities also gave them a higher chance of coming into contact with COVID-19. And when they got in contact with it, they weren't getting contacted by the ancestral strain that the vaccines were, were, were designed against, but the alpha and the delta and beta and gamma as well. So there's going to be a diminution as well because it's not, qu it's not quite as matched. And then the other point is, yes, there is some waning, but these first generation vaccines, their primary goal wasn't to block every infection. They're not force fields. They're not bug zappers. They're meant to to make any breakthrough infection mild. That's what their goal is. So the fact is, yes, breakthrough infections are happening, but the fact that they're mild and most people don't have to call their doctor when they get them is a sign not of the vaccine failing or not working as well as it once did, but it's, a, it's actually a success. There may be second generation vaccines that are better and maybe more like the measles vaccine. Maybe there'll be nasal spray vaccines because these vaccines don't give you a lot of antibodies in your a special type of antibody that gets produced in your nose, which is how you get infected. They're not these ones are not the best at doing that. So, so that's the, the, the issue. So breakthrough infections were always expected. I think people just misunderstood what a vaccine was doing. And I think they got spoiled by seeing those numbers from the clinical trials. Yeah. But yeah, yes, breakthrough infections occur. And, and I think the other point is that they're not, they're, they're, because they're not, they're not severe, that's something that we have to, to kind of cheer about, but that's being used against the vaccines. And those breakthrough infections are less contagious than than someone who doesn't have a vaccine because you're contagious for a shorter period of time when you get a breakthrough. So I have no problem with the vaccines. I think they're really, they're the solution to, to COVID and, and Omicron. I don't think that there's any, any issue that we can actually blame on the vaccines. I think it's very, very um, almost unjust to the vaccines. I think it comes from a misunderstanding and the anti-vaccine movement kind of taking data and presenting it in a certain way to confuse people who don't really have all the expertise or the knowledge of what this vaccine was meant to do or how those clinical trials are going on or the context of different variants and people's activities having an impact. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you 
who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.